Hi everyone, I'm Helen Farrelly from the MGA and today I'm joined by Ina Kim Shad, the 2019 US Women's Mid-Amateur Champion uh, and three-time Women's Met Amateur Champ. Luke Sample, the 2020 Met Open and Met Junior Champion, and Chris Gaffney, the MGA's Director of Championships. Thank you all for joining us today as we kick off the new 2021 golf season. Um, we wanted to spend a little time with both Ina and Luke to talk about their plans for the upcoming season, as well as reflecting on their successes from, from the past couple of years. So Ina, I'll start with you. Uh, how are you doing this spring? And are you back up in New York? I think you were down in Florida for most of the winter, escaping the cold like a very smart person. <laughs> Well, first of all, thank you guys so much for, for having me on. Um, you all know that the Met section is is very near and dear to my heart. And um, it was kind of my my foray back into golf. So um, I have so many special memories from both organizations, the MGA and the WMGA. And I'm just very thankful to be a part of, um, of both of those, those realms. So thank you. Uh, I am currently in Florida where it is actually thunderstorming, believe it or not. <laughs> Uh, but I will be back up in New York in a couple weeks, so I'm excited to be back and, and see how the uh, how New York has held up since, because I, I really didn't spend much time there last season. Good. Yeah, we're, uh, I think everyone in the Northeast is happy to have a, a new golf season and hopefully some consistent warmer weather on the horizon, so you'll be back just in time. Um, but what is your, your summer schedule looking like in terms of your golf game? Yeah, it's a good question. I actually haven't quite figured it out yet, but I'll, I'll definitely, so this coming Tuesday, in a couple of days, I have the uh, US Open uh, qualifier, and then I will be going to um, Pinehurst to play in the AGA, the Amateur Golf Alliance Tournament, Women's Mid-Am Tournament, um, the week after. And then I'll be back up in New York for a couple events. I'll have the Women's Amateur at Westchester uh, in June. Um, and then I haven't quite gotten past that yet, so I'm just, uh, I got to figure out if I can play in the, uh, the, the North South at Pinehurst. And then obviously I'll be, um, trying to defend, uh, at Berkeley Hall this year for the U.S. Women's Mid-Am, um, and that's in September. So I, I think that's a pretty decent schedule. I'll, I'll definitely try and play in, um, a few of the MGA and WMGA events. Um, hopefully, I think I might have to miss the Mid-Am, but I'll try and play in the Met Open if I can, um. And you know some of the some of the other the stroke play events and stuff. Yeah, that's great. We're excited to bring the WMGA MGA Women's Met Amateur to Southampton Golf Club this summer. Um, I was going to ask Chris if you could give us a quick rundown of the the ladies' events on the MGA calendar. Yeah, absolutely. I think a pretty special year for us. Ina alluded to one of the big events in the area. We have the U.S. Women's Amateur at Westchester Country Club. Uh, U.S. Senior Women's Open is at Brooklawn Country Club, so two national championships in the backyard this year. And then for our own schedule, a couple of pretty exciting sites for us. We uh, kick it off with the Women's Met Am, which will be at Southampton Golf Club, a classic Seth Rayner design, a really, really special property, got challenging greens and uh, a lot of exposure to the elements out there. So wind will definitely be a factor. And uh, one of the cool things about the schedule this year is the Women's Public Links Championship is at a Seth Rayner golf course also, uh, Rock Spring in New Jersey. So a pretty special lineup there, and players will definitely need to have their short game on point for those golf courses. Uh, and then rounding out our schedule in October is the Women's Four Ball Championship. Uh, that one for us is a net tournament, and it's a unique structure. It pairs together two members, two female members from each MGA member club uh, who come out and compete in four ball stroke play. Uh, so we'll be at the Mutton Town Club on Long Island for that one in October to close out. That'll be a fun one and a good way to close out the golf season. Um, Luke, I was going to turn it over to you. And first of all, thank you for joining us today. I hope you're not missing school um, to participate in this conversation. But you had an amazing season last year in 2020, winning the Met Junior runner up at the Met Amateur and then winning the Met Open in pretty demanding fashion against a, a very impressive field. So now it's May, looking back on last summer, what was that experience like for you? And as we enter a new season, what can you take away from those great finishes you had? Well, first of all, um, I just want to say thank you for having me. Uh, like Ina, the Met section is 
really special and uh, important to me. And um, you, you all have treated me so well over the years. So it's a pleasure to be able to sit down and talk with you um, right now. Um, looking back to last year, starting with the Met Junior, um, it was a crazy week, um, starting with a Met Amateur qualifier the day of the stroke play uh, for the Met Junior. Um, and there was just a lot going on. And I felt like that was uh, a, a, an appropriate way to start off that stretch of golf. Um, and given what ended up happening the rest of the summer, um, it was just a really special experience to be able to compete there and really, you know, have an opportunity to avenge my 2019 loss in the Met Junior and then to continue that and build uh, at different levels of competition um, that the MGA was able to provide a platform for the Met Amateur. Um, had a great run there um, with <laughs> a lot of different experiences in that event. And then to really close, that, close it out at the Met Open was, was one of the coolest moments uh, I've ever had in golf. I think at the Met Amateur, we were talking to you and trying to count how many rounds of golf you had played that week between all of those events. And I can't remember what it was, but we were impressed that you were, were still walking and still playing. Yeah, I think it was uh, a little over 100 holes is what we ended up tallying it up to. Um, but, you know, I felt young and I felt, <laughs> I felt like I could handle it and uh, just kept going. So Luke, you, you alluded to it, but with being uh, the youngest now Met Open champion and only one of eight amateurs in history to do so, has it taken a while for that really to sink in and uh, any different feelings now looking back on that victory in August? Yeah, well, it definitely took a while to, to set in. And when, when I finally uh, held the trophy again, uh, when it got, got to uh, Manhattan um, and, and saw my name listed with all the incredible past champions. Um, it, was, it was really a surreal moment. And um, I, I was just filled with, with gratitude and appreciation for the people that have supported me over the years. Um, and then to all of you for, the, for that special week. Um, but that also um, made me really proud of what I did. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna forget that one for a while. <laughs> So any difference in uh, interactions out there? I think becoming a Met Open champion, you're in a pretty unique fraternity uh, that's mostly comprised of golf professionals and some of the best we've ever seen in our area. So anything changed from your perspective there? You meet anybody new or anybody reach out to you after winning? I, I uh, ended up talking uh, a lot with Bobby Hines, actually, two-time, I believe, two-time Met Open champion um, from Old Oaks. Um, and we talked a little bit after that win about, you know, having mo more than, uh, or adding to the Old Oaks Met Open collection um, was a special moment, as well as um, it, it's been really awesome to just have a little bit more recognition from different places that I've played since then. Um, and it's, it's, it's been awesome. Great. That's awesome. That was a really exciting week at Mountain Ridge to, wa to, to watch you. Um, and speaking of wins and reflecting back on those, uh, Ina, it was similarly amazing to watch you compete in the 2019 U.S. Women's Mid-Am and see you succeed from stroke play qualifying through match play to hoist that trophy. Um, can you reflect a little bit about on that experience playing against the, the best in the country and what it was like to become a national champion? Oh, thanks. It was, I mean, it was just an epic week. We were in Flagstaff, Arizona, and the weather couldn't have been better. The course was super pure. We're playing at elevation, so I feel like I'm hitting it really long. Uh, I had my husband on my bag. I had a great Airbnb, Airbnb with two of my good girlfriends. Um, and so it was just like a great week. You know, we were kind of cooking at night, drinking wine. Like it was very, very relaxed. Uh, we all wanted to play well, but we were there having fun. So it was, we had a lot of great memories. Um, like I said, my husband being on my bag was super special. Uh, so it was just, it was incredible. Um, and the golf just, golf gods happened to all be smiling down on me and things just aligned that week. So it was great. And from that win, you were exempt into the 2020 U.S. Women's Open. Uh, that was your first U.S. Women's Open, I think? Yes, it was. <laughs> uh, I mean, 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like to to play on that really the the largest stage of of golf and compete against yeah. so many great players? It was really incredible and honestly super humbling. <laughs> uh, it, it the courses were were really in great shape, um, and they were truly truly championship courses. I mean, it's like you play in every level you play, just uh, the open is just super different. Um, I think in my practice round, they had had a little bit of rain a few days prior. So nothing was running out and I'm not exaggerating. I did not have a single iron into a single par four during my practice round. And I'm like, okay, great. <laughs> Luckily it dried out a little bit by the tournament time. So I, I had, I had mostly irons and hybrids into the greens, but it was, it was pretty intense. I think they played us at, um, 5,700 yards for a par 71 course. And these girls, like little, little girls are blowing it like 40 yards past me. I'm like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> it's just, it was awesome. It was super fun. And everybody was super sweet. Um, my only kind of like bummer moment was that my family couldn't be there because of COVID. So, um, but my best girlfriend came in from Chicago, which was amazing. And my husband was there. So we still had a great time. That's great. And you'll be competing at Westchester in the U.S. Women's Am, right? Is, does an exemption get into there? So you have to be looking forward to playing in that right in your, your New York backyard. Yeah, it's the backyard. So hopefully we'll have uh, some family come out, family and friends come out and watch. It'll be really cool. And I, I love that course. It's really tricky and um, the greens are really intense. So it's a really good challenge, I think. It's perfect for the Am. That'll be really fun. We're looking forward to that one too. Thank you. So um, I'm going to turn it over to you, Luke, um, but Luke, you're wrapping up senior year of high school. What does your spring golf schedule look like? We know we just saw you um, in, at U.S. Open local qualifying. Um, did you play at all over the winter and any specific areas of your game you're working on as we head into the summer? Yeah, I, I played a little bit in Florida and Texas, um, and I also went to Charleston, South Carolina as well. Um, so I was able to compete a little bit uh, in the winter months. And it, I mean, I, I felt like I had a pretty good stretch of golf continuing off the end of the summer. Um, so I, w with the Azalea Invitational in Charleston, um, I felt like I played pretty well there and then didn't have a great week uh, a couple weeks ago at the Terracotta in, in Naples, Florida. Um, but I feel like the game's starting to trend in the right direction after that week. Uh, I'm looking forward to a great season of golf uh, up in the Northeast. Um, I believe the middle mark invitationals in just under two weeks now. So I'm look, really looking forward to that. Um, as well as a really strong amateur schedule uh, throughout the Northeast and, and beyond. So um, Hopefully the Son of Hannah Amateur will be a good one for me to play in for the first time, um, as well as the Northeast Am and the Met Am, and really trying to just prepare myself for a, uh, you know, the end of high school and, and moving into college golf, so I'm excited. That's great. You've had some interesting travels, uh, maybe not so typical for a high school senior, but uh, you played in and for a while were leading a pre-qualifier for the Puerto Rico Open uh, over, the, over the winter. Uh, what was that like to be out there competing against some of these pros who are, are double your age uh, for that type of event? Yeah, I think the pre-qualifier was a really neat experience for me. Um, to be able to play kind of like the Met Open, just with people that have been around the game for a lot longer than I have. Um, you know, you learn some things, you pick up on things that you just, that I wouldn't know. Um, you know, watching the way they treat practice rounds, uh, how deliberate they are in practice rounds, how deliberate they are in the competition. Um, but to be able to lead that tournament for a while and, and to, to move on to the Monday qualifier where, um, Honestly, the best part of the Monday qualifier was was playing the practice round with uh, Met Area native James Nicholas. Um, it was the first time I had the chance to play with him. Um, we had a really great time and just being able to be up close and seeing what uh, the next level of golf is like uh, was really special. Well, I'm sure that event was just the first of many to come and, and much more golf ahead of you. <laughs> 
Um, so Ina, back to some local events. I know you said schedule isn't fully determined yet, but you have had awesome success in the MGA and WMGA Women's Med Amateur. Uh, you've won three times since 2016 and back to back in 2018 and 2017. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that event and what it is that uh, really seems to click for you? Oh, that event is really special to me because it's actually the first event I ever played in um, once I, when I picked up golf again. So it was my very first tournament. <laughs> so I went and played at Atlantic, uh, I believe it was 20, was it 2017? Is that it? Maybe? I don't know. 2016 or 2017? So that was my it's first. 2016, uh, around then. <laughs> Uh, golf tournament once I, I picked the, the game back up. So it's just a very special tournament for me. Uh, I would say definitely sentimental. Um, and it kind of, I went in with no expectations uh, and it, it's pretty easy to get the golf bug when you win a giant trophy at, at Atlantic Golf Club. So <laughs> thus the roller coaster began. <laughs> It all comes back to Atlantic. That's that's great. That's a special one. Right. Hopefully, we'll get you out to Southampton this summer, uh, not too far from Atlantic. Exactly. <laughs> and Luke, what are you looking forward to about this summer and uh, competing locally? I know you also have some national events on the schedule. Yeah, it'll be really great to compete in. in uh, I'm really looking forward to the men amateur, um, in particular at at Plain Fields where. Played in the Met Junior a few years ago there and didn't quite make match play. Um, wasn't my best week. Um, I am really looking forward to that one. It just, especially after the way uh, the Met Amateur played out last year, just kind of like the Met Junior the year before that, I, I would want things just a little bit and I'd, I'd like to, uh, uh, you know, compete and go, go down to the wire in, in that one as well. And then the Carter Cup is go also going to be a very special week um, as well, which um, you know, didn't have my best finish there last year either, but I um, feel like there's a little more to prove this summer. There's a lot going on for sure. Um, Chris, speaking of the Met Amateur, that will be played at Flamefield Country Club. And then speaking of uh, going out to Southampton, kind of down the road from there, we will be at the bridge for the Ike Championship. Uh, any, any previews you can give us about both of those events and both of these courses? Yeah, I think uh, Ike kicks off our major championship season and, and pretty excited for the uh, back-to-back years now that we're going to have a first-time major championship host. And, and the bridge uh, is as good as it gets and very special experience for all of us. We haven't ran a championship there before, so uh, pretty excited to be able to run an event there. And then also to, to provide access to all the players in the Ike to that golf course is just going to be a special experience. And one of the coolest clubhouses there is probably in the world uh, for, for a country club so uh gonna be a special one and none of us have seen it before in major championship condition so uh, i'm sure they're gonna impress us on that side and as luke said it's gonna be a pretty special week in new jersey we're gonna go carter cup at baltus Rall, a newly renovated lower course uh looks absolutely spectacular right now uh and then two days later we roll into the bet amateur at plainfield country club so, uh, plainfield has no shortage of impressive history uh, Jason Day recently won the Barclays there. A lot of great past champions. As Luke alluded to, we had the 100th Met Junior there. So uh, just a special match play course, Donald Ross golf course. Uh, re really looking forward to what we have lined up for this year. Yeah, really happy to have the, the full schedule back on, on the calendar this year and head to these great spots. Um, so, Ina, I saw over the winter um, a post by you that you have uh, completed training to become a mental coach and work with players on the mental side of the game. I thought that was super interesting, such a big part of um, what we see uh, professional players talking about on TV and, and just seems to be a really hot topic. Um, so can you tell us about a little bit about that experience and the work you're doing with that? Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, it's been just an an amazing experience. I I'm kind of in awe every day that I get to do it. That uh, I'm blessed to be in a position where I can try and help people um, because I myself obviously have a very personal journey uh, with my own golf game, and I 
to be perfectly frank. And I think you were there at the French American when this old an event went down. But uh, but I had my own kind of turning points with golf, and and I um, early on when I started playing golf again. Uh, it didn't take me long to realize that I had a relatively toxic relationship with the game. I enjoyed it, but when I was playing competition, I was putting so much pressure on myself and I really was making my own self miserable. So I really had to redefine my relationship with the game. Um, and that is not an overnight process. I learned pretty quickly. Uh, so being able to kind of go through that and have a very healthy relationship with the game now and really love it and not be so results oriented um, to enjoy the journey, not the destination. Um, it's been it's been so transformative for me personally. And um, now that I get to see students go through that and come out on the other side uh, equally, and, and I know we all have different journeys, but just to be able to improve their relationships with the game um, and then eventually, you know, see results, it's been beyond gratifying. It's It's wonderful and I'm so lucky and thankful to be able to do it. That's awesome. And I'm sure you could learn new things about that every day. So glad to hear it. it's all going well. Yeah, definitely. I don't think I'll ever stop learning. So it's been amazing. Luke, so starting up at uh, Duke in the fall, you guys seem to have a great recruiting class uh, coming in. What are you lo most looking forward to about getting over to college? Yeah, everyone, uh, everyone at Duke always says it's, it's about the people that makes it so special. Um, and I'm really particularly excited for the recruiting class that we have um, and, and the people that I've already met on the current Duke team, as well as the coaching staff. So I think that'll be the most special uh, part of it, just building relationships and uh, building relationships there. Um, everyone says it's the Duke Brotherhood, really looking forward to that. Um, and yeah, it's, we got one more summer into, until uh, Duke rolls around. So we'll make sure to uh, make it a good summer of golf and uh, then continue when we're there. Nice. We'll be following along for sure. Um, so Ina, you have mentioned, you just mentioned, but you've competed on our uh, MGA and WMGA French American Challenge team, which is a uh, team event between the MGA and WMGA against the Ligue de Paris over uh, with our friends in France. So can you just talk a little bit about competing in team events like that? And if you prefer, you know, the team format versus individual, any experience with that? Oh man, it's just, first of all, it's such an honor to be able to play um, in this tournament and uh, obviously fun whether we're hosting Paris or Paris is hosting us. Uh, and the characters that, that are on the team are just fabulous. And uh, it, it's not often that you get these co-ed team events. So it's just a blast being all together and seeing how um, everybody has such different games and we all just get the ball in the hole. Uh, so that's always fun and the banter is always great. Um, and I hope we beat Paris this coming, <laughs> this next coming year. Uh, but it's just a wonderful event. I wish we had more team events like this. I know they're, they're difficult to put together and it's a lot of work, but they're just fantastic because you get such a great mix of people. Um, you get to play in formats that really challenge you and, and your mental game and as well as your physical game. So uh, it's just a lot of fun. And I think that we don't do it enough here in the United States. Um, and you know, in Europe, they, they go out and play alternate shot and, and best ball all the time. So they're so accustomed to, to playing in these team style matches. And, and um, I don't think we have that uh, format nearly enough for us to be as, as well versed in it and know how to roll with the punches um, as agilely as, as they do. But it's just a great format. Um, I do wish we had more. Well, we certainly hope we'll be uh, bringing home the trophy here when we welcome the Ligue de Paris back in uh, the fall of 2022. Um, but uh, I wanted to turn it over to Chris for a minute. In October, the MGA will be facing off against Golf Ireland in our Carry Cup matches. Uh, and we actually have some exciting updates to the team structure. Um, Chris, can you elaborate a little bit about, uh, elaborate a little bit just going to start that sentence over. Um, Chris, can you elaborate a little bit on the upcoming matches for this October? Uh, yeah, and it's it's good to hear Ina say that she loves the team matches before we uh, reinforce what we're doing this year. But historically for us, the Carry Cup has been comprised of six amateur male golfers. And we're pretty excited to say that this year, for the first time in 2021, we're going to add four female representatives to the team. 
So the new structure for the Carry Cup is going to have 10 total players on the team, six male, four female, uh, and we'll be heading over to Ireland in October. So a pretty special year for that. And uh, I, I totally agree with Eno. We don't play enough foursomes or four ball over here. And it's always, uh, it's always a lot of thrilling outcomes, a lot of surprising outcomes too during those formats. So uh, no short of, of excitement at events like the Carry Cup. Yeah, we're, I think, all really looking forward to that one and have those days circled on the calendar in October, especially with this new team structure. Um, that's pretty much all I had to, to ask you guys. Thank you so much for giving us a little bit of an inside look into your upcoming season and, and what you've been working on. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time today, and uh, we know we'll see you both out on the golf course very soon. Thank you very much. Having us. Nice you, Luke. Good yeah. luck. Bye. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Helen. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, guys.